Hey, it's Meredith again from vidpromom.com and in this video, we're gonna continue on in our series on how to use VSDC for editing your videos. In the very last video, I showed you how to set up a new project and import your footage. And in this video, we're gonna talk about all of the basic video editing functions that you might wanna perform when you're editing your video, just in case you want to edit things out or add some special effects to your footage. Now, this series on how to get started with VSDC for your video editing is brought to you by VSDC. So if you haven't checked out that platform yet, it is only available for PC users, but it's totally free. So I put a link to VSDC's website where you can download that software and you can follow along in this tutorial series. Okay, so I'm gonna open up VSDC here and uh, before I pick up where we left off last time, I wanna remind you that I have that one page cheat sheet um, for getting started with VSDC. This is definitely for you if you're a total beginner. I found that trying to figure out the exact steps of starting a new project and kind of like getting into the editing was a, a little bit tricky at first. So I created this cheat sheet for you. You can uh, hit the link in the description below this video, or you can head over to vidpromom.com slash VSDC cheat sheet, and uh, I'll send it directly to your inbox from there. Now, where I left off last time with my project, I had created a video project um, from a recent trip to the Adirondack Mountains. So I think I had maybe four clips in here. I'm going to just double click on my sprite there so that you can actually see my clips and they're all right there. Um, I dropped them in here. I rearranged them a little bit. I showed you how to start a project, how to add uh, files to your project. Today we're going to talk about actually the, the actual editing functions, how to split a clip, how to trim your clips and things like that. Um, now Last time I told you about the uh, some of the features of the pro version of VSDC that I think come in handy. You don't have to have them. You can use the free version of VSDC without any problem at all. Uh, but one of the things that I think really speeds up editing for me and makes it really easy is to be able to see the waveforms. So the reason why seeing these waveforms is really helpful is... In a situation like this, now I've zoomed in on a clip here. Um, we're in the middle of a lake. Uh, we're just having a conversation. And I kind of, I think my finger or something kind of rubbed on the microphone of the GoPro. So it's kind of like, and I'll, let me back up a little bit here and show you. See, so did you hear that? So let's just say that I wanted to edit that out uh, without missing a whole bunch of the conversation. I can see here in the waveforms exactly where that is because it's louder than the rest of this conversation. Um, so if I bring my cursor, let's just say right there, then we want to make sure we have our editor menu up here at the top um, because it's these tools right here that we're going to use. There's a couple things we could do here. Uh, we have this scissors tool with the little green like film strip kind of looking thing. And this is split into parts. So this is going to split our highlighted object, which is our clip down here, um, into parts based on our cursor position. So our cursor cursors right here. So if we hit this one, it's going to split this into two different parts. So we're splitting our clip right here. So you can see that it did that. We're zoomed in a little bit, so it's a little hard to tell, but we, we did do that. If I wanted to make sure to show my waveforms up here, then, uh, then it would be right there. The other thing we can do is let me, I'm going to come over here. Um, we can actually, if I click and drag along the timeline up there at the top, then I'm kind of selecting a section. Um, let me just, I want to bring this right to the beginning here and then bring this one. You can see my waveform there. That's where I went on the microphone. So now I have this little section selected. And now if I hit this other little scissor tool, it's going to delete just that little section. So you can edit 
things out of your clips. For example, if you have footage that's really shaky or, you know, sometimes you press record um, to turn your camera on or off. And there's a few seconds there where the, you know, the video is shaky or jumbled or, you know, you go on the microphone, uh, for example. So you can either split your clip up into sections, almost like you're, you know, using scissors on a film strip. That was this one here, the first one that I did. Or you can simply select an actual section and just delete that entire section. And then your clip is going to stay together right your your clip is going to stay together on that same layer but you're just going to cut out that middle section if that makes sense now this um tool here this is the um cropping tool if i select this then i can let's say i can move this around so this is kind of like reframing or zooming in a little bit. I'm going to hit OK. And you can see that it zoomed in. And um, I have some black bars down there. I'm going to actually hit, um, come back here. I'm going to hit Undo. And it will go back to normal. Now, you also have an extra little cutting and splitting tool. If you hit this, um, this is going to kind of give you more uh, sort of refined control over your splitting and your uh, and your trimming over here. Now if you click and drag on this timeline here, this is a, it's a little hard to see, but you can basically select a region here in the middle and just hit cut region and it's going to cut out that middle region that you had selected. And down here you can just hit play and it's going to just play this clip that you have selected. So this uh, this function of VSDC is a little bit confusing to me. It's not super straightforward. So I like to kind of work within the timeline here uh, because that's what I'm used to with other video editors. So some other things we can do here is we can rotate our video 90 degrees and we can go clockwise or counterclockwise. So if you happen to mount your GoPro upside down, for example, or if your cell phone video is uh, on its side, sometimes that happens, um, all you have to do is just rotate it. And then under this little wrench option, you have some more tools. Um, so we could kind of reverse our clip if we wanted to horizontally. Uh, we could do the same thing vertically. We can... Um, create a snapshot. So what that's going to do is save a still image for us. Um, this is a pretty common function in video editing, uh, especially among, I think, GoPro users. Uh, we always kind of want to get a still image, a good still image from our video. Um, let me see if I can find a good, a good spot here. So let's just say I wanted to save this as a still image. I have this clip here selected. I'm gonna hit that little wrench button, create a snapshot, and it has created a snapshot for me and saved it as a PNG file. So I'm gonna close that. And then if you wanna just trim off, you know, for example, if you wanted to just trim a little tiny bit off of the end of a clip, um, then you can literally just click and drag it. Okay, so if you do that, then you're going to want to line these up again and line these up again. And you can see our markers down here um, from where we got into this cutting and splitting window. Um, so that's what those little gray sort of uh, markers are there. Now I wanna show you fast forward and slow motion because this is something that I think a lot of GoPro users uh, love to use. And even if you're just shooting video on your cell phone or something, sometimes you wanna speed it up to get that time-lapse effect or slow it down so you have a little bit of slow motion happening. And what you need to do is um, there, there should be a uh, properties window over here on the right-hand side. If it's not there, just under the view menu, if you hit properties window, it's gonna bring up a properties window. If I hit that X, it's gonna go away. But if I hit this little push pin, it'll kind of uh, 
stay over there and I can open it up again. So what this is showing me is the properties of this exact clip that I have selected. So uh, we know that it's 1920 uh, wide by 1080 high. It tells us how long it is. Um, let's see. It tells us a bunch of other things. It tells us the file name if we needed to know that. But what we really want to look at down here is the speed. Speed. Okay, so we have it at 100% right now. If I slowed it down to, um, let's say, 10%, I'm just going to delete a zero and hit enter. You can see how the clip all of a sudden got like longer in my timeline here, right? That's because it's 10 times longer because it's 10 times slower. So um, if I hit preview right here, let's see what happens. It's really slower and you can tell in the audio that it's not that great. So um, that's fine though. I just wanted to show you how that worked. If you wanted to speed it up, then you can speed it up. I usually like to start with 400% and you'll see that the clip got a lot shorter. So let's hit play here. Okay, so my computer didn't like having to play back that sped up clip. That's no problem. So I have everything back to 100% here. You can also play your clip backwards if you wanted to do that. You would just hit yes instead of no down here. So you have a couple of other options down here. I'm not going to play with those right now, but I do want to show you, you have the ability to adjust your audio volume. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. You can see that it's at zero right now. That just means that it's at you know whatever level whatever decibels it was recorded at so you can bump this up a little bit if you need to make it a little bit louder um, and you can bring it down a little bit if you want to make it a little bit quieter so if we bring this to negative 14 let's see if it if we can tell so it's hard to compare there so let me bring it down a little bit more so we can see negative 54. Let's check that out. So you can barely hear it there. So if you wanted to create a video where you had background music and you wanted the background music to kind of be the star of the show instead of the audio that's, uh, that's in your videos, then that's how you would adjust the volumes on that. And down under that, you can actually split your video and your audio. And if I hit that, so pay attention over here to this uh, clip. If I hit split, it's actually going to give me a separate track for this audio. Now it depends really on your editing style and what you're trying to accomplish with your video. But sometimes I actually want to use the audio part of one clip with another clip. So um, if there's a conversation and happening in the background or something that I kind of want to use that and if it kind of makes sense to do that, um, then you have the ability to do that. And then all you have to do is you can just click and drag this wherever you want this music or uh, audio portion um, to be. So there is that. Now, not every video editor can split your uh, your audio and your video. So I love that VSTC has that capability. Now I've showed you a lot of basic video editing functions. A lot of these are pretty much the same as any other video editing software. Um, I didn't show you everything, of course, but I'm going to close that window there. I think I've showed you enough to get started, uh, but let me just, if I right click here on one of my clips, I want to show you, you have this menu and under video effects, you can do some fun things like these quick styles. So you could make this an old film look if you wanted to do that. Um, you also have the same styles up here. Um, you also have the ability to make some adjustments to the coloring. Now, I don't usually do a lot of, of um, color correction on my GoPro clips. Usually I just have it on auto color everything and I just let that let that go like that. Um, but you do have the ability to make some adjustments here. So don't be afraid to play with these styles, the quick styles, um, the color adjustments. 
uh, the filters, anything you want to do. If you don't like it, all you have to do is come back over here and hit undo and you'll be fine, okay? So you can just kind of start over from the beginning. So that covers a lot of the basic editing functions and some more advanced editing functions of VSGC. There's so much more that this software can do, and there's a few things I'm sure that you might be interested in, like how to add music to your videos, how to add titles to your videos, and things like that. You also might want to know how to export your video project so you can upload it to Facebook or YouTube and show it off to your friends and family. We will be covering those topics in the very next video in the series, so make sure you're subscribed to this channel, and if this video was helpful for you, give it a big thumbs up, and let me know in the comments if you just recently got started with VSDC because of my video, let me know how you like it, how it's working for you, and if you have any questions, and I'll see you next time. Bye.